Alrighty, yo, what is going on? If you buy your boy, Mr. DDG94, back with another reaction video. Today, we finna react to top 10 re most repeated wrestling tropes and cliches. Without further ado, man, let's get right into it. What's up? Is this on? Wrestling never takes a break. 52 weeks a year, we'll see storyline after storyline, match after match. So that means we're bound to see certain tropes repeated to the point where they become cliches. This is the biggest WWE cliche I've ever seen. This is the staple cliche. This is a contract signing. They always end in a Pier 6 brawl. Some of which fans enjoy and others we could do without. Today we'll list examples and dive into the lore by highlighting 10 overused wrestling tropes. Almost every match will have false finishes. A wrestler has to build up to hitting their finisher. So in the meantime, we'll often see secondary moves that never got the job done causing a near fall. <laughs> Damn. Zero. Zero. This is fair enough since the move causes damage, plus frequent pins force the opponent to exert extra energy. But the real kicker is when the wrestlers and announcers appear shocked they didn't win, acting as if the maneuver that's just been hit is going to win the match. Like it's never been kicked out before. Yes, there are rare examples when moves like this lead to victory. But 9 times out of 10, they don't. However, the talent and commentators still need to sell the effects of the move and subsequent pinfall, since the match can potentially end at any time. Kicking out of the side effect, not something we see very often. Another way to build drama in a match is by utilizing the referee's 10 count when the wrestlers go to the outside. Generally speaking, matches that end by count out disappoint fans. Reset, reset! Oh my god. But even more so when it's a beloved babyface that failed to get back in the ring in time. It's Rick Johnson from underneath the ring, grabbing the leg of Ricochet and forcing the count out. So that means when someone does beat the count, it can act as its own false finish. As the crowd builds while the wrestler stirs and starts to move, eventually getting to their feet and into the squared circle, much to the fans' delight. Stay down, Dean. Count of eight now. Dean Ambrose trying to fight his way back to the ring. Thank goodness. No. Oh, what? Feet. He just beats the count. Why, Cody? Why are you doing this? Legend for sure. Well, wait a second. Talk about toughness. Take Garcia. The count out. Garcia makes it to the ring. Count. Oh yeah. And count. Jameson oh. beats the count. It's a proven way to keep the audience invested. Hence why it's so frequently done. But just like the wrestlers and the show itself, the fans need a break too. Which is why during the commercial breaks, wrestlers will slow it down and grab a hold. Sami Zayn, Shinsuke Nakamura one-on-one -on -one with our first matchup of the evening. But before this can happen, a big dive or impactful spot will occur. So as to keep the people watching at home engaged and eager to tune back in after the commercial. Oh! Welcome back here to the oh, no! oh my god. Samoa Joe did not get all of that. Oh! Rollins is in trouble. And now driving Samuel. Oh my God! Oh! Sammy's dead! Oh!
where at that point both the TV audience and those live in attendance are kept invested in the match. Chris A tried and true tactic to move a storyline along or hype up a future pay per view clash will see a wrestler do commentary for their rival's match, where trash talk is a given. He chokes again. And Chris Jericho beat him for the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fifth time. You need to worry about what's going on. Shut over your here. mouth. Well, the rock is this boring crap. Or I'll slap the dead right off your monkey ass and give it back to you. Whoa, oh, bring it. Go ahead and bring it, you no tooth bitch. Why are you Going nearly 33 uh, minutes. Uh, Moral, eliminating. I, Moral, I believe I'm here as well. Thank oh, look, you very much. Look, if you keep cutting me off while I'm talking, you're going to have a fatter lip than mine, McMahon. Now I'll reach over and nail you right between them. I'm oh. attempting to be disrespectful. Batista just got knocked down. Batista's down. Batista's down. Batista's down. Even more guys are going to get physical and ambushing their rival. Well, get your hands off my belt. That's a disqualification, ain't it? It's a good time. It's a good time. It's a run in. It's a run in, JR. One line for the big show, either. Disqualification? Look at him. What are you doing? Barrett. Go check somebody else's name. He did that right in his face. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. Sends into a brawl is the contract signing. The contract signing for an upcoming pay per view bout started to become more common during the ruthless aggression era as it gave matches that big fight feel. Over time, the contract signing started to become more overdone, but they're usually still a good chance for both talents to cut strong promos before they eventually lock up. And you know what, Punk? Some of these people actually like the WWE. Can it be better? Sure, it can be better. And that's my job to make it better. Plus, during these segments, the fans are sure to see the wrestlers come to blows before the big match. I mean, when's the last time we had one of these contract signings that didn't end in some sort of horrible physical calamity? With everybody saying, we all know how this is going to end anyway. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going down. My ass is going down. Swing. Oh, there you go. Turn the Peter. 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 And they're shooting the action here. I don't need any backup for someone like you, fat boy. Fat boy. Oh, look out. Look out. Oh, oh, my God. Brock. No, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. with that pen. You're going to sign in your own blood. Oh, fuck. Go call your monster. I'm gonna oh. drop half this orange on the floor. Fuck! While the rival on commentary and contract signings can still make for engaging stories, one storyline trope that often doesn't hit the mark is when rivals have to team up. Walking the earth, the big cast the fears. Sure, there's been examples where it's been done well. They're champions! What more do you want? They could be a great tag team. Hug it out. In Chicago and oh, there they go. But let's instead focus on times it hasn't. Like when two rivals who are single stars win the tag team titles. Sometimes they even run through the entire tag division, defeating multiple teams. This was the case with John Cena and Shawn Michaels in the lead up to their WrestleMania 23 match. In fact, John Cena has won the tag belts and teamed with multiple rivals over the years, and every time it just doesn't work. Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the new tag team champions. <laughs> Even his famous tag match with the Rock at Survivor Series 2011 was built up poorly on television. Oh, no. oh, God. 
During the build to a historic match, historically, it was common to see whoever ends up losing at the pay-per-view stand tall and gain the advantage over their opponent during the go-home show on TV. This allows the wrestler to look strong and be seen as a threat going into a match they're booked to lose. Meanwhile, it builds further drama to the story as the opponent seeks revenge. Goldie Matt. Gonna be out now. Oh! Paradigm shift from Jericho on the scale. Uh, Covering. Oh, oh, We've got a new champion. We've got a new champion. The title belongs to you. It's the cover. He did it. Rock is going to WrestleMania. Big oh, shot by Batman. This could happen. Sunday. Double, double choke slam by Big Whoa. Show. <laughs> An almost unwritten rule whenever a table is involved in a match states that whoever sets the table up ends up going through it after the opponent counters. Balls for Odin now setting up the table. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. God, no. Oh no. no. Oh. And poor old rock for him to win. Obviously, this doesn't happen every time, but it occurs enough to be considered a frequent wrestling cliche. Setting the tables again in the ring. He's gonna send it for a ride! A last ride! A last ride! There's no need to hurry. I don't know if John has the strength to superplex. Well, oh, check it out! A table full of mouse traps. Able to have children after tonight. Oh, and now through the mouse trap table. Barrett looking to put on to the table. Looking to drive the Ooh, table. Stupid. Whenever there is a special referee assigned to a match, they're more than likely not going to call things straight down the middle. Two, three. What, three? three? You son of a bitch. It's a good way to continue a feud or add into it. Oh, uh, that's why the rock is one of my. That's why the rock was my first goat, bro. The rock was my first goat, bro. Another disqualification match. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's disrespectful. That was crazy, bro. This match is go-ted, bro. 
This is go Ted, bro. This was a great send off for the Attitude Era, bro. Without question, this was a great send off for the Attitude Era. That's what I'm talking about. That's why he's the MVP. That's why he's the goat. The goat. <laughs> this was a great way to send off the Attitude Era, dog. Dog. That sweet chin music into a pedigree. That should have been it, dog. Oh, that would have been. It would have been a crazy. Yo, yo. Great match. Just great fucking match, man. Right? One of the easiest ways a wrestler can draw a negative heel reaction is by insulting the city or country they're in. Did you ever notice that the United States of America is shaped like one big giant toilet bowl? Because most Americans are just plain full of crap. If you were going to give the United States of America an enema, you'd stick the holes right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Damn. Who's your daddy, daddy Montreal? That's still a go to your promo. That, that JBL, I will never forget that border pro, that border skit they did, bro. That border promo they did, bro, with JBL going to the border and kicking all the Mexicans. <laughs> oh my god, yo, 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 wild shit, bro. Wild shit. That is some wild shit, bro. In Jesus' name, fuck this nigga. That was some wild shit. <laughs> a cesspool of decadence and debauchery. And in all likelihood, that cesspool will be governed by a prime minister of Pakistani extraction. I thank you very much. As well as its fans or local sports team. If you can call them men, actually I think they were members of your Chelsea football club. Lakers, Lakers in May. Stronger than a bear, faster than a buck. The biggest thing to hit Canada because the maple leaves suck. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, you know. It's like having a basketball team in Seattle. Because this type of promo is such low hanging fruit, so to speak, it's considered cheap heat. But there's a fine line between getting it wrong. I mean, you've got the inferior hockey team. You're not even the best island. In, in Long Island, Staten Island, Staten Island's even better, and that's trash. We all know that. And doing it well. Oh what do you want, oh, you dumb, worthless, fat pieces of shit? We're not even on TV yet. Yeah, I love video games, and then I lost my virginity. Damn. A certain wrestlers were able to pull it off and make it entertaining, especially those who made Cheap Heat a recurring fun part of their act. Examples include Kurt Angle. The Steelers are a disgrace. See? The Pirates are an embarrassment. Oh, boy. And the Pens, well, actually, the Pens aren't too bad. Well, but nobody cares about hockey. No. <laughs> I hope the U.S. loses the war in Iraq. I think the greatest country in the world is France. But I'm not a very big fan of the black people. The one person in history I'd like to make tap out would have to be Jesus. Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way, bro. Then shut the fuck up in 2020. Yo, bro, ain't no fucking way, bro. <laughs> ain't no fucking way, bro. Don't no cracker talking here. You ain't my friend. Some of them going to sleep. Fuck God. Another coon. Damn coons. I gotta do a coon analysis and a coon scream. It only takes a little bit of white brainwash to activate the coon chip in the average Negro. You have lost your mind. You have lost your mind. You have lost your mind. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I can say anything I want to these idiots, and they'll still cheer for me. Edge and Christian. Because of JFK and 
had spent five more minutes in Dallas, he would have committed suicide anyway. <laughs> and ravishing Rick Rude. What I'd like to have right now is for all you fat, out of shape, Syracuse sweat hogs, Louisville losers, Nebraska nerds, Pennsylvania piss ants, Kansas sweat hogs, <laughs> out of shape, Springfield sweat hogs, and some are quite proud of it, I might add, Rochester rugrats, beef eater Boston boys. To keep the noise down while I take my robe off and show them what a real sexy body looks like. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our similar video of WWE wrestlers on TV before they were stars. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Alrighty, man. That's just going to about do it for this one. I will see you all in the next video. Till then, peace out.